The LDR instruction is a useful instruction for when you want to uh, access sequences of addresses known as arrays. So you could have a, a sequence like this or a sequence of addresses that's farther away from your program. And the way that we want to do this is that we're going to situate the LDR command within a loop. And so if you imagine like a for loop, uh, these two commands here initialize your loop. And then we have an, a decrement and a loop condition down here. And we're going to use those to keep track of how many times we run our loop. And we'll explore that a little bit further. And then we're going to need an array pointer. And we're going to establish that with R4. So R4 is going to be our array pointer. And we're going to basically load the value of a nearby address. And that's going to be the top of our, our array. And then we're going to increment through those addresses to actually access every element in our array. And just to take a step back, our R5 is going to be our loop counter. And it'll keep track of how many times we've run our loop. And our R3 is ultimately where we're going to store the data that's coming from our array. And we'll have the memory address register, memory data register to keep track of some extra things, as well as our program counter just to help us. So let's um, clear all this out and look at the code nice and cleanly. So what we're going to do for these first two steps is first we're going to clear R5 so that's got all zeros. And that's where we're ending with zero. And then we're going to add the value A to our loop counter so that it's going to count 10 times and we're going to load 10 values from our array. We won't go through all these, but we just want to show you the principle. Then the load effective address basically looks at the program counter. So the this command is stored at x3002. After I fetch it, the address inc the program counter increments to x3003. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare these two, add them together, and store that into R4. So 00d plus x3003 is x3010. And what that does for us is tells us that this is the top of array. <clears throat> and so now we have the top of our array. And what we want to do now is load that top of the array into our value of R3. The way we do that is by saying, hey, R4, you have my array address. Send that to the memory address register, x3010 and then load that value into the MDR at x4000. <clears throat> and then once I have that in my memory data register, we will put that in register 3. So now we have each of our, our top of array into our R3. And then the next step is I'm going to add the value 1 to this, so that now rather than pointing at the top of the array, my array pointer, R4, is pointing to the next address. And then I'm going to decrement my loop counter so that it's saying, hey, you've gone through the loop once. And then we check to see, is my loop counter negative or positive? 9 is a positive number. So that means we're going to branch back to access our next location. So this branch negative 4, let's make sure we understand how that works. So our program counter when we get to the branch instruction is 3006. We'll do our fetch to increment to 3007. And then we're going to add negative 4 to go back to x3003. So we're going to go back 1, 2, 3, 4 locations back to x3003. Let's clear all these extra stuff out. <clears throat> and but now, our, when we do the same load register command, our R4 is pointing to a new location. Down, um, Rather than pointing from here, it's now pointing to here. And <clears throat> what we're going to do when we do this load R command, our memory address register is going to get 3011. Our memory data register will get X5000. And then that will be stored into R3. So now our loop has enabled us to access consecutive addresses in memory by using the, the register to keep track of 
where the array is stored and how far we've gotten into it. Then we will increment our R4 with the, that first add command, and then we'll decrement R5 so that our loop counter goes down, and eventually when we get down to our loop counter being zero, we'll finish loading all the contents from the array and we'll be done. So that's the LD, the, this combination of LEA plus LDR allows us to access an array that's nearby. So if I change my program to change the LEA LDR combination to this LD LDR combination, I change my code so that I can access arrays that are far away rather than with the LEA LDR combination, I can only access arrays that are nearby. So let's walk through the code and see exactly why that is, and we'll begin. All right, so R5, we'll get our loop counter, X00A. Then my load R4X00D command is going to first increment my program counter, which is at when I'm executing is X3003, add that with X00D, and it's going to store that into the memory address register. So that's going to be X3010. And then the at that location is 4000, which is going to my MDR. And then that 4000 is going to go to my register 4. So my top of array is now at, is down at X4000. <clears throat> now, so when I do this load register, my R4 is pointing down to X4000, and so my my memory address register will get X4000 from R4, and then because it, my memory address register is pointing to there, we are going to load X1234 into my memory data register. We'll store that into R3. Then we increment our array pointer, so now it is pointing down one lower level to this address here, and then we decrement our R5 to do this, to keep track of how many times to do this. We get to our branch, and we'll go back a few steps to redo our load instruction. So repeating that whole thing again, just to go through every array, we'll just show one more repeat. Now my array pointer is pointing to X4001, so when I do load register, my R4 gets copied down to my memory address register. My memory address register tells me to pull out data from the memory, so I get X0101, and that goes into my R3, loading the next value of the array, and then I can keep repeating this process until we're, we finish reading the array.